to land at the near destination of college, where chances are it might be a little harder. But let's not focus on that yet, because I know you can handle it. Bianca, I just want you to know that I really enjoyed being your friend these last two years. I remember the first conversation we had. I walked up to you and asked you what grade you were in. I thought you were going to be in my class. You kindly told me that you were a junior and not a sophomore or a freshman. I think you had to clarify that once or twice. I'm sorry. I remember wishing that you were in my class because of the kindness and positivity I saw in you from the very beginning. And I knew that would bring a lot to my class, especially at that moment in time. I really look up to you. I have never heard a mean word come out of your mouth, except for the occasional I will murder you, that you sometimes sarcastically say. <laughs> you have always kept a smile on your face in the good times as well as the bad. I remember hanging out with you, KJ, and Raven last summer, and I was very encouraged by how you kept such a positive outlook on the future even when the upcoming year looks so grim due to some unfortunate circumstances. I thank you for helping to encourage me to stand strong during that time and for being willing to continue with a light heart and with a smile on your face. Even up to now, there has been many a day when I have just needed some encouraging smile or some kind words, and you have always ended up doing just that. As you leave, I will miss your shining light. Always remember put Jesus first, and never lose that wonderful smile. May God continue to bless you. Have fun in college. Don't forget about what you've learned here, and you better go to my grad. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I have the privilege to give a tribute to the one and only Bianca Ledesma. <laughs> All right. So, that I believe we have. Now, is it just me, or why do the names that parents give their children always, and I mean always, seem to describe the personality of the children? It's like, how did they know? So, you know, I mean, it's really interesting. So, there's no exception with you, Bianca. You and your Italian name go together like, like liquid oxygen and the Merlin engine. Um, <laughs> if you don't know what the Merlin engine is, you can, you can ask Merlin later. He's over there. Um, speaking of that beautiful guitar of yours, I really appreciate that you've used that gift to bless others this year and that you have put it on a hill. You have not put it under a bushel like so many people do, but you have use it to bless others. Never stop playing. Your music has the power against the forces of bad day disease. Equal to the energy output of a Falcon Heavy rocket at liftoff, powered by Merlin engines. Now, you like to read. You like to read. You like to read. Never give that up. Knowledge is power. Those who read, lead. And uh, you like to write. Those who write, Read those who read, yes. Uh, and, um, and you know, those are the best ones to lead anyway, because they're the people who are actually going to get stuff done. And that's leadership squared. My friend, wherever you go, go with all your heart. So, um, I think you told me once that you like to fly, so that's always good. And um, you might make a better pilot than me. But remember that the plumber, the musician, or even the mom with a God-given PhD in mothering can all be just as successful and are just as successful as any person, any successful person that you might think of. Work like the ants and be free in Christ as the birds. My prayer for you is that though there seems to be 10 different magnetic poles, God will guide the needle of your conscience to the correct choice. Remember that God is the only source of true freedom, and with him, you will mount up on wings as eagles. Always be true to God's church and that flag right there. And pray for and um, thank God for the opportunities given you by that flag right there. 
Godspeed and um, from the OHA control tower, uh, Bravo India, Alpha, November, Charlie, Alpha at runway niner. Caution, wait, turbulence, you are cleared for takeoff. Dear Bianca, May, a month that is full of excitement, is like a bright light that brings us um, hope. You will leave our school, your schoolmates, and your teachers, and move on. The four years you have spent in high school end here with a period. People say the sky is big enough for the birds to fly as high as they want to, and the sea is big enough for the fish to swim as far as they can. Wherever you go, remember that you are a student from OJ, because here is where part of your memory are buried and is filled with happiness. These last days, you might be preparing for your graduation speech or your application for your future college, or you might be in every corner of the school trying to take graduation photos for memories. <laughs> but remember that you are still a high school student, a student from OHA. The rules still need you to obey and leave the school as an example for us all while you are still here. After the excitement, why not quietly think about your future? Be it a job, or a nice college, it's not going to be easy anyways. But don't worry, you have Jesus who is leading your way. Even though you are going to leave OH, the school will still be watching you because the school believes that all of its kid, kids that, um, have great hidden strength and it will always be proud of you. I will encourage you on your ways towards success. Be strong on the rest of the journey. Through this upcoming time, I wish you success and wisdom in this upcoming time. High school is the season of flowers, and you are its greatest flower. In the little time before your graduation, please be good. Don't make your time in the high school be of any regret. So when you look back, you can say, I have worked hard, I have struggled, but I don't regret. The end, I, want, I would like to say, plan your future carefully, leave the school with a good mark, and remember that you are part of God's people. I wish you all my blessing. And remember that there is a person, his name is Jesus, who always loves you. So you finally made it. I'm glad you made it. You're finally graduating from what a good friend of mine called it senior citizenship. I'm glad you made it, but I'm sad you're leaving. Not that I wanted you to fail to stay or anything, but, um, but before you go, I wanted to say thank you. Believe it or not, you've helped me a lot this year. Not necessarily by giving me direct advice, but simply by your example. Other than the fact that you eat everything, you're very admirable. I look up to you. And one of the things I've really appreciated is, like Nathaniel said, your smile. It's very contagious. It's not an I'm messing around type of smile, but it's a smile of kindness. You have taught me to smile more, even if you aren't necessarily having the ideal day. It's a good trait to have. Not only that, but you have a good balance between a sense of humor and seriousness. This is a trait that I have not mastered. <laughs> I'm working on it. I always tend to be a little too serious or I'm too unserious. Um, but you always seem to have a good combination of both. You're going to have to teach me someday. Um, you know when to be serious and when to joke around. Although you sometimes also say that something's too hard, you're actually very persistent. I lost my spot. And you don't give up easily. So in a sense, you're delicate and tough at the same time, however that works. 
But overall, you have been an inspiration not only to me, but to all the juniors. I've really seen growth in you and has encouraged me to grow too. And I guess my advice to you is just never give up. Don't give up on your goals, whether they're big or small. Keep striving for the best in everything. You influence people, and many will follow in your footsteps. Keep God first in all things. And with this in mind, you'll be successful in accomplishing great things, and you'll be the best anesthetist ever, not the other. <laughs> Happy graduation. A true friend is one who knows the song of your soul and sings it back to you when you have forgotten the words. My dearest Bianca, I remember the night I first read this quote. I had been having a terrible day, and I was ready to break down and cry in my room during study hall. <laughs> and no one really knew what I was going through or what I was feeling. And then you walked into my room and you gave me this really long <laughs> understanding hug. And then you gave me this quote. And ever since that day, you have been that true friend to me. Uh, I thank the Lord so much for placing you in my life because you have been an angel to me every single day. Even at the beginning of the year where um, we weren't as close as now. Wow, okay. See, I, I told you I couldn't control this. Um, <laughs> if I had to describe you, the words would not fit in this page. And I would be up here all night recounting experiences that would only show a glimpse of who you truly are. However, since I don't have that luxury, um, all I can say is that your personality is kind, sweet, and cheerful. Most importantly, the courage with, with which you carry yourself in the face of stress is, has been truly inspiring, I believe, to all of us. Um, even in the days when everything seems to be going wrong or when you're, you are super stressed out about pre-cal, uh, you always manage to smile, put on a brave face, and say, wonderful. <laughs> and this is a trait that I hope you never lose. Um, the serious strong side that you show most people is only a fraction of who you truly are, however. I remember those seemingly eternal, yet fleeting minute questions during study hall, when we would talk about the most random things until Ceci would pop her head into our room and say, your time's up. And then we would ask for another question, even though we didn't really have anything super important to talk about, and how I would <laughs> double over in fits of laughter at your weird random comments. <laughs> you have no idea how much it meant to me for you to waste all of your questions on me during study hall. No matter what kind of day I've had during the school year, you have always been my golden potato, as we have come to call our small, <laughs> our small, blissful moments during the terrible, terrible days. It's hard to explain that one, don't ask me. She coined the phrase. <laughs> as you go on to college, please don't forget the good memories, the lessons, and the friends that you have made thus far. However, let go of the painful memories and mistake. Only let those mistakes be stepping stones for future success. Above all, always remember to take the cares to the Lord in prayer as you move into the world of adults. Keep growing in the Lord and never, never let go of his hand. Remember the advice of Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. <laughs> Finally, I remember how especially the last few days you've been coming into my room and telling me how you're freaking out because you don't know what the future will hold and you don't know what's coming up next or exactly what the Lord has in, plan in mind for you. And I know that it can be scary, but I would like to share with you this quote because I know how much you love quotes. And it says, 
Courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the judgment that something else is more important than fear. The brave may not live forever, but the cautious do not live at all. I know stepping into the unknown is scary, but it's okay because you're held in God's arms. Stay strong and courageous. We all appreciate you for everything you are. I love you, Bibi. Bianca, life happens. Uh, when I was uh, looking at OHA online, I saw people lining up to do tributes to, uh, to students, and I said, nah, I'm not going to do that. But here I am today. That's your first lesson. When I arrived at OHA, I was ready to take up a new and exciting challenge, but how was I going to achieve all of this efficiently while keeping up with marking students' books and papers. Then came an answer from Ms. Clark. A reader, a student that helps teachers with marking assignments and recording grades. In other words, Bianca. <laughs> Bianca, you have been a real blessing. You are quick, accurate, teachable, and always pleasant even on your bad days. I appreciated the many times when before you drew conclusions that you came and asked me questions, many questions. I would like to affirm you on the graceful and humble manner in which you received needed feedback. One of the keys to success as mentioned in the Bible and in the book Messages to Young People, chapter four, is faithful integrity. I remember the times when you would bring to my attention that student or two who were committing academic dishonesty, you were willing to stand up for the right in the little things. And for that, I affirm you. When you are faithful in the little things, you will always be faithful in the big things. Another principle of success is punctuality and promptness, or promptness. This habit, I notice that this has become a part of your character. I can remember one, one day you told me, I have never been late for anything at OH ever. I'm yet to confirm that uh, from uh, staff here. But anyway, I remember when I, when I asked you to do a particular task, when I arrived to see if you had started, you were already finished. And taking the work to students' boxes, you carried heavy books to the cafeteria without ever complaining once. Whether it's the mysteriously exciting job of marking, a research, marking research papers or junior speeches or simply organizing papers in a class folder, we have a saying in the junior class that it was Biancated. <laughs> Bianca, God has a special love and plan for you just as you played those musical pieces on your classical guitar. Uh, after repeatedly practicing to gain perfection, so it is that Jesus wants to tune the chords of your heart and make your life a melody. I leave with you uh, the words of one of my favorite songs, Jesus is my music. And it goes, my life was out of tune and happiness eluded me. My life was dissonant and missing in a harmony. But then I met the Savior and received this gift of grace and now my life sings melody. Jesus is my music. Jesus is my song. Jesus is my music. I want to sing his praises all day long. May Jesus go with you 
as you climb the ladder of success. And every time you play your classical guitar, remember, Jesus will make your life a melody. Thank you, and may God bless you. Sessie, when I had to think back on all the memories that I had with you, I remembered the first time I met you. It was in fifth period study hall, freshman year. It was like the second day of class. It was the first day I noticed there was a super tall girl in the academy. And I looked over at you, and I was just like, who is that? You know? And I, freshman year, I was very talkative, as you probably remember. And after a couple days, you started to realize that. And then after a while, I would see this person just staring at me going. <laughs> and it kind of scared me, you know, just a little bit. I started to get freaked out. And I just slowly started to back off. And then finally, I worked with the courage. And I'm like, Sassy, when you stare at me and you go like, what does that mean? And she's like, well, assume it means shut up. <laughs> and I was just like. Okay, I probably deserve that one. <laughs> oh, trust me, we've got more to handle. So that was the first memory I had with you. And then after that, the next thing I remember takes me to this year. This was a highlight. It was during bell choir tryouts. Well, when they had just given out the papers. Peter had been sick, and he wanted one of them. And we were looking for one, but we couldn't find one. All we could find was one that had already been filled out. And then Ceci taught me paperology 101. How to doctor a paper to turn it back into a regular sheet of paper. She showed me how to use whiteout, tape, scissors, extra pieces of paper. And I think in the end, we saved one piece of paper by wasting like two others. <laughs> but it, it worked out perfectly. Ceci, out of all the amazing memories I have, I also remember one from Bell Choir just about two months ago. I was sitting in the bus in the back, and we had gone through some interesting experiences, me and a couple others, and sad to say it, I was crying. And you noticed that. You came and sat in the back, and you shared with me a Bible verse that changed the mindset of everything. And from then on, I have not forgotten it. You have been an amazing influence to me and to everybody at this school. You left your mark here, and it's never going to be forgotten. But that's only by God's grace. And I pray and hope that as you continue on, you will continue to leave your mark wherever you go, which is the mark of Christ. God bless you. Okay, sassy. <laughs> I remember those study hall nights when you, would, you had to drag Linda and I out of each other's room because we were making too much noise. <laughs> or because our time was up and then Linda would try to hide in the closet hoping that you forgot. Sometimes you did. <laughs> Anyways. And then, you know, so she can have longer questions. And then Linda would cry, Chachi! <laughs> or when you would run down the hallways trying to get um, Linda and Gabby, mm, yeah. Then I got kind of upset, upset with you because you gave me a mark, but um, I deserved it, so, because I was being loud, but it's okay. It just lasted a little minute. I'm sorry we gave you a hard time at study hall. You never said this, but I'm sure we occasionally gave you a headache. Hopefully you still want to have kids. <laughs> I don't think they're gonna be as loud as we were, but um, I'm also really surprised that you don't have gray hairs yet. I would like to sincerely thank you for helping me a lot in Algebra 2. I appreciate it a lot. I don't know what I would have done without you. Ceci, we're going to miss you. I don't know. Wait, hold on, sorry. Okay. Arranging things for, for backpacking was fun. Ceci, keep your walk with Jesus. Whatever you do, make sure that it will increase your relationship with him. Whenever you have to make an important decision, ask yourself if it will strengthen your walk with him or if it will make you stop. Seek God in prayer and in his word. 
Reflect his character at all times. Don't forget what you learned here. I apply everything OHA has taught you, especially Potch. I'm sure it will help you. You will need it. But don't use it yet, like after college. <laughs> don't get distracted with boys. Be an example for others to follow as you have been here. That way you can bring others to the feet of Jesus. And don't forget about me. Remember to call the dorm, OK? Keep being that studious, consecrated young lady that you are. I know God has in store for you many good things. Keep being faithful to him, and he will reveal it to you. Thank you, Ceci. Okay. Thank you, Ceci, for everything that you have done here. I'm going to miss you so much. I love you. Dear Ceci, I am going to start with the cliche statement that most people say, and it goes something like this. I don't know where to start. Quite frankly, it's because I really don't know where to start. Our friendship starts back to the antediluvian time of three years ago when I walked into the cafeteria for lunch one August afternoon um, during summer work. And I had been rained on all morning, and I was soaking wet. I stepped into the calf soaking wet, and I proceeded to make myself a plate and find a seat. I saw a new, taller girl sitting down, and I thought I would join her. She almost looked like the girl version of Marcelino. <laughs> I did not consider my body that was dripping in rainwater to be a problem at all. And when I sat down beside you, you looked at me funny. <laughs> I then made the connection that I, was in a that I was a disgusting mess. <laughs> and I then asked you if you would like me to move. And you ever so shyly and boldly nodded your head, yes. <laughs> Ceci, that is one thing I have grown to love about you. You are never scared to speak your mind or to knock some sense into somebody that is lacking in that area at the, any moment. Your upfrontness, is admirable and you don't sugarcoat the truth. You possess skills in that area that I really need to acquire. I can truly say that I really enjoyed being your friend these last three years and the fun I have had hanging out with you will stick in my memory for a very long time. You have been one of the closest friends I've had at this school. One thing I have seen in you is that you really care about not just your friends but about everybody. I really admire that about you. Ceci, thank you for everything you have done for me and for this school. While being here, your influence has never failed to be a positive one. You are very well organized, something I would like very much to attain. And you have always, and you have many times encouraged me to do my absolute best. I know you are going to do well in whatever God calls you to do or, where he, or wherever he tells you to go. Continue to strive for excellence. Don't forget what you've learned at this school either, and you also are required to come to my grad. Dear Ceci, it's official. You're soon to be graduating from Awachita Hills Academy. As you look to further your endeavors, whether that be giving your future patients interesting sorts of liquids or applying stacks of pressure to seize the blood flow for odd reasons, keep the Lord at the center of your life in the very nucleus of all your intentions. Now, I'm just going to mention a few things um, that I can recall. I remember back in freshman year, I was washing dishes, and I didn't really know how to wash dishes at the time. And you were just in the kitchen, um, I guess, um, interrupting my washing sessions and you were holding a knife and you were walking towards me and I was like, uh, what is going on? Is this normal? Is this what happens at the school? And I, I was just kind of scared, but you're telling me, hey, it's a knife and it's, you're just okay all about it. And I was like, okay, well, I guess that's just how it runs. And so 
And that was just one time that I can recall. Um, I always say that you're always working all the time. You're always hard working. We can all say that you're always focused. And I've never seen a person more focused than you. And so that is a good character trait that is that you possess. And so I believe that that's going to carry you far. It's going to make you a successful person. And I'm just going to read a very awkward poem now. Um, I have not practiced, so if this goes bad, uh, please forgive me. OK. There is one that towers all. Her name is Ceci, and yes, she is tall. And yes, she can also fix a wall. She did in construction during last, last fall. If you're confused, do not despair. We went on a trip that was so rare. Houston trip was its very name. We all did jobs that were pretty much the same. But it was fun, and it was not in vain, and I hope you too feel the same. Classes at school were very quick. Many math problems seemed all but a trick. All the while, Ceci knew because she would study and eat the morning tofu. <laughs> but let's not forget an important part. Remember God who has your heart. Keep him first above all things, and success to you will he also bring. Now, I want to read a verse from John 14, 17, and it's more of a farewell from our creator, Jesus, and he says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. When all the world seems to fall, be assured that God will give, be able to give you the peace that the world cannot give, peace that passeth all understanding. Just remember to uh, keep eating the tofu and accidentally turned it off and visit my graduation. Your friend, Moses Park. Dear Tina, because I don't know why everyone calls you Ceci, because where does Ceci go in Celestina? And then, I, and then you told me that you, your, your parents did that, and then I kind of felt bad. Um, so, uh, usually I, uh, people usually start with a list of good memories, and I'm going to too because I cannot elaborate on them all. So here's some. Meeting you for the first time when I signed your yearbook. Meeting you again for the first time when you were doing registration and thinking, wow, that must be a responsible student because they seem like they're doing something a staff should be doing. Uh, helping each other set up in Bell Choir, that one break down during music fest that we never speak of, uh, putting brains, discussing CDA, and uh, you sharing Shel Silverstein poems with me. Um, I could go on, but I'd have to break on my time limit, which I honestly am probably already doing. So I am going to attempt to say something that uh, I, I think I tried once, and it, it didn't come out right. But hopefully it'll work this time. So in life, there are things that we all do, that some things that we have to do that are unpleasant. For you, that could have been giving out marks or helping people get out of situations that they uh, very much brought themselves into and probably deserve to be in and reap the rewards of. It could be risking a friendship to hold someone back from bad decisions, or maybe it could be speaking up from the right for the right when everyone seems to love what's wrong. And these are the things I simply call hard things. Also, I saw you gave Anjali a book, and it had uh, hard things on it, too. So I was like, oh, maybe she'll get it this time. Um, so if I were to sum up hard things in one phrase, I think the best way I would put it is self-denial. And I think you are someone that is willing to do these hard things. And maybe you don't particularly feel that you are, but I've seen you do it, and you most ha definitely have the courage to do it. And I think sometimes <laughs> you'd rather pretend not to. And you, you've, all, you've said some very straightforward things to me, and I thank you for it, actually. Um, it's caught me off guard once or twice, but it helps me <laughs> swallow down a bit of pride. <laughs> and it's very brave. It's admirable, and it takes a strength that the world doesn't expect. You have a brave face a lot, and I just, I just want to say that 
you don't always have to have a brave face because you only need a brave heart. And only, you can only have that through Christ. Another trait that I admire about you is that you are very diligent and you're a good adage of, uh, if you want anything done, ask a busy person, which is maybe unfortunate. I remember one time Mr. Neal was telling that to us in one of his history classes and I was like, oh, okay, so I can just ask Sessie. Um, so if you want someone to blame for all those yearbook articles this year, then it's on Mr. Neal. <laughs> this year, I remember I, I, like asking you for all this yearbook writing, and it was probably annoying. And, but you never turned one in late, to my remembrance. And though people usually use attributes like kindness and love and grace to talk about Christ, I think diligence is probably... I think, at least, is one of his greatest attributes because I think Christ still did his homework. Also, I have also really valued your silence. For me, at least, it's sometimes nice to be around someone that you can just sit around quietly and contently because you know they're your friend and you don't need vocal affirmation to know that they are. I don't like to speak for other people, but I do know that both staff and student alike will feel the deep hole that you leave behind. And, but that is the price of friendship. And the interesting thing is when we buy things, we don't think of the money we lose. We think of the thing we gained. I think that is the friendship that we've all had with you. It won't be particularly pleasant when you leave, and it will cost some sad faces and tears, but by God's grace, you've made a positive mark here, and at least you've made a positive mark for me. I'm going to miss you a lot, and Godspeed wherever he leads you. We have some things in common. Chief among those would be our unusual, the unusual altitude we have attained. <laughs> Not that we really had much of anything to do with it, but at least we shared the same fate. <clears throat> uh, I think we could identify with Saul in the Bible, at least when I was seeing you share the mission report up here, being head and shoulders above the rest. I thought, that's what I look like. <laughs> And on Bell Choir, we often had the common fate of people wondering if we were related. Although I would be happy to claim you as a relative, the only thing we could say is we were brothers and sisters in, a brother and sister in Christ. But being tall has its liabilities. Um, having to stand at the end of the risers two steps down just to be the same height as everybody else. Um, Getting your heads cut off and your head cut off in pictures. <laughs> Being taller than almost all the other students, I think maybe all of them. We weren't sure on Kevin. Um, and enduring probably the endless questions of how tall are you? Has anybody ever asked you if you play basketball? Oh, that's what I got. It's the common fate. Um, but you know, I think that one of the things that has impressed me is that height never has seemed to bother you. You've always, if you did, you didn't show it. You've carried yourself well. You stood erect. You um, have poise and um, with dignity and a modest reserve that I have greatly appreciated and admired, and that says a lot. You know, we're told that a, a young lady who is simple and unpretending in her dress and her manners shows that she understands that a true lady is characterized by moral worth. And I have seen that in you, Ceci. If, um, if I had to pick one attribute that comes to mind after having been my reader and working um, so effectively for me, I would probably say it was faithfulness, diligence, thoroughness, responsibility, capable, quick, understanding, dedicated, and consecrated. Um, I mean, the spirit, fruit of the Spirit says the fruit of the Spirit is, right? All those things. <laughs> And I think that um, they definitely have, I have found those to be true in your life and working uh, 
in the responsibility as my reader. Um, as you're a reliable person who can be counted on, trustworthy, I have seen in you an excellent spirit that has gone your counsel last night to the juniors on drama. I've seen you manifest. I've seen you walk that counsel this year and in your experience here. And I know it was um, very appropriate. I um, have seen you develop and grow in a in your talking and sharing. And I can give something to you, and I know it will be done carefully, professionally, and creatively, and you'll do it with a smile as far as when you present it. Do you all notice when she was up here how much she smiled when she talked and gave her presentation? Whenever she talks up front, she smiles. She does a really good job at that, and it comes across so warm and receptive and comfortable, and it's a, it's a strong characteristic that will take you far in life. Um, you're curious and uh, like to know what's all going on, but I also know that you respect things. You told me once, well, I didn't look because I, I, didn't, I didn't want to look on the desk. You didn't dig around on desk and you didn't because you're not sure what might be there, and you were careful and conscientious even though you're curious. I also appreciate your obedience and your respect of your family and your parents in particular. I think you told me once that you have a saying in your family that went something like, well, feelings are interested, interesting, but that's not how we make decisions. Is that right? <laughs> and I've seen you manifest that. Feelings, well... I've thought of a few oxymorons for Sessie. You know what an oxymoron is? Sessie knows what they are. Um, it's a figure of speech, contradictory terms that go together, um, kind of like the eloquent silence or something being seriously funny. Or some people can be both pretty ugly as well as awfully amazing. These are not ones, these are just examples. But, the one that comes to my mind is that you have been a terribly good reader. <laughs> and your abilities to proofread are horribly accurate. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had anybody be able to proofread so incredibly well. And I'm very poor when it comes to many writing abilities, and so Ceci has been invaluable. I just give them to her, and she finds every T uh, to cross and dotted I's and every other misspelling that I put in there. And um, she's been very good at that. But I think the oxymoron that probably comes to my mind most, and it might be one that I've coined, is, Ceci, you have been reluctantly willing. And I might even put it as compulsory, you've become a compulsory volunteer. Because when it came to becoming the RA, she didn't want to. But she did. It's not an easy job. Um, being an assistant dean, sort of-ish. And at times, I think it might feel more like being a residential, instead of being a residential assistant, it might feel like being a more like the residential alien. And, but I know I've seen you grow in the job and seen you become and take it responsibly and do an outstanding job. Um, I don't know that you really wanted to be my grader, but you did. <laughs> and you were excellent at it. When it came to bell choir, I wanted to put you in the upper bells, and you said you didn't want to. And I said, that's fine. Go ahead and do it. <laughs> and you said, OK. And you've just done an outstanding job, even though you still tell me you don't like them, the high bells. But you do them with a smile. And I never have to worry about them. You've learned to Shelly ring all four notes. It's harder to ring. Um, when I've given you introductions sometimes to do, you were hesitant. You came in my office one time with your guitar, and you were strumming to sing a song for special music. And I was like, I thought would sound better if you picked. And you said, I don't know how to pick. I, and I was like, you don't know how to pick? You said, I can't. So I showed you a little bit, and you're like, 
and you left. <laughs> well, the next time you came in, you sat down and you picked. And I was like, where'd you learn that? I just did. <laughs> because even though you don't want to do it, you have the character to pick it up and do it. And, um, you know, I think as I look back over your time here, um, I just stopped asking you if you would or if you wanted to. I stopped asking if you wanted to do something, and I simply asked you if you would. And I think you almost always, another oxymoron, did. And uh, as I think about what the Bible says and about what a lesson there is for that characteristic in life, it's huge. Because the Bible says that the flesh, flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these two are contrary one to another so that we cannot do the things that we would, that we want. But in the previous verse, it says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You know, Sessie, if you take that characteristic of always doing what you don't want to do and putting that on the side of Christ, there'll be no stopping to what God will do in your life, through your life, and what he will enable you to accomplish for him. One last quote. You know, one of the hard things about being at a school is that you get close to people, you work with them, you live, and you, they become part of the OH family, and then they just leave. But in actuality, that's what we're here for. We're here to send. And although it's hard, it's still the goal of what we're all about. And this was a statement that was from the Spirit of Prophecy of a letter that was written to a young lady. And it says, You are just entering upon womanhood. And if you would seek the grace of Christ, if you would follow the path where Jesus leads the way, you will become more and more a true woman. You will grow in grace, become wiser by experience. And as you advance from light to greater light, you will become happier. Remember, your life belongs to Jesus and that you are not to live for yourself alone. It's been a joy to see you becoming a true woman. And um, I will miss you here next year. I will miss that the average height on campus has gone down a little bit. <laughs> but I trust you will always stand tall for Jesus.
let's just end the evening with prayer. Father, we rejoice for the blessings that we have experienced through our friendships with Bianca and Ceci. We thank you for the way you have led in their lives and for the assurance that you will continue to lead. And tonight, Lord, we just um, bask in the warmth of your friendship and their friendship and pray that you will continue to develop them into young women of yours who will do great things to hasten Jesus' coming. Bless us now with a good night's rest, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.